welcome you all to the lecture series of retail electronics KOE 039 oblique 049. Myself Dr. Kishanu Kundu, Assistant Professor, Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, GL Bajaj Institute of Technology and Management. So, we are discussing about digital, digital logic families and this is the part 3 lecture of the same topic digital logic family. In the previous parts, in part 1 we have discussed about digital logic family and characteristics of digital logic families. Okay. In part 2, we have discussed some examples of digital logic family like RTL, DTL and DCTL. So, in part 3, we are going to discuss two more examples of digital logic family that are TTL and ECL. So, let us proceed. So, first of all, we will discuss about TTL, transistor transistor logic. Already in the previous lectures, we have discussed about RTL that is register transistor logic, DTL diode transistor logic and DCTL diode coupled transistor logic. So, now the turn is for transistor transistor logic that is TTL. So, transistor transistor logic belongs to the digital logic family, it consists of transistors at both input and output sides, diodes and few resistors. Okay. Unlike resistor transistor logic and diode transistor logic, both the logic function and amplifying function are performed by the transistors. Okay. The TTL integrated circuits are very popular in different applications including computer controls, consumer electronics, industrial control systems and etcetera. So, TTL are having application in these areas like computer control, consumer electronics and industrial control systems. Most TTL circuit have some type of totem pole output configuration. So, what is totem pole output configuration? We are going to discuss in the next slide. Here we will be having the three configuration totem pole output, open collector output, tri state output. Before that, we will discuss a normal TTL logic and then we will come to this lecture. So, let us start discussing about a TTL logic and this time we are going to implement NAND gate. Okay. So, you know what is the output of NAND gate? When both the inputs are low, the output will be high. If any one of the input is high, output will be low. This is the logic of NAND gate. And now, we are going to implement this same NAND gate logic using transistor transistor logic. Okay. So, you can see from the diagram itself, it is a diagram of two input TTL NAND gate it has 4 transistors q 1, q 2, q 3 and q 4. Total 4 transistors q 1, q 2, q 3 and q 4. Transistor q 1 has 2 inputs. Here you can see a 2 input transistor. Till now these are all are 1 input transistor, but here you can see 2 emitter side is there. Right? This is called 2 input on the emitter side q 1. Okay? transistor q 3 and q 4 from the output side. So, q 1, q 3 and q 4, we have taken output between the q 3 and q 4 and this is called the totem pole output, this is called the totem pole output. Okay. Now, the circuit of two input NAND gate may look complex, you can see, but we can simplify its operation by considering the diode equivalent of the two input NPN transistor. Okay. Here you can see this part, this part we are going to simplify, this part we are going to simplify. Okay. So, let us check how we have simplified that, we have taken diodes, here this d a and d b represent the two input emitter junction of transistor q 1. Okay. So, q 1 can be replaced as two diodes again for q 2 I we have taken another diode. Okay. So, you can see d a and d b represent the two input emitter junction of transistor q 1, diode d c represent the collector base junction of the transistor q 2, this is d c, this is d suffix c and this is for q 2 and these two are for q 1, these are for q 1. Okay. This is the 
simplification we have done from the previous circuit. Okay. Why we have taken this consideration? Let us check. So, when both the inputs A and B are low, we know that the this is plus this is minus of diode. right? So, see if we are giving 0 0 means this is forward biased, okay. both the diodes are forward biased. So, both the diodes are forward biased. So, the current due to supply voltage V C C will go to the ground through R 1 and to diodes D A and D B. Right. The current will be going like this forward bias. Okay. This two diodes are in working mode, open uh, close switch on, you can say forward bias, on switch, close switch, anything you can say. Right. The supply voltage gets dropped in the resistor R1 and it will not be sufficient to turn on the transistor Q2. Means here you can see that this is this is the supply voltage is coming here right so we have taken up to this part only so this is the supply is coming so this current will be going like this no current will be in this part no current this current will be in this part so this what will happen so no transistor current will be going to the q2 and q2 will be open so if q2 is open the Q 4 will also cut off means you can see from the diagram when Q 2 is open. So, it is cut. So, this like this it is also cut right because this current is going to the base of Q 4 right. So, as Q 2 is cut so Q 4 is also cut. So, what will happen since Q 3 Q 2 cut, but the transfer Q 3 is pulled high Q 3 is pulled high here you can see that Q 3 is pulled high, because this current is also going to this as this current is going to this side I can change I can change the color you can easily understand this current is going to this side. So, this current is also going to the, the base of the Q 3, but there here no current, but current is going to this side. So, it will make Q 3 as high it will turn on Q 3 since Q 3 is a emitter follower the output at the terminal also will be high which is a logic one. So, if Q 3 is high then logic one will go to this current now this is forward biased. So, current will go this will on. So, this will go to y. So, y will be 1 got it when both are 0 then what will happen? this current will be go to that side, but current will not current will come to Q 3, Q 2, Q 4 off, but Q 3 will be on and Q 3 will be on. So, its current will make this diode as already is followed by as condition. So, diode will be in on and will be acting as a closed switch as a result Y will be 1. Okay. When any of the input either A or B is low. So, if any of the input is low then that diode will be low input will be forward biased and the same operation take place as explained there in this case the output will be high. So, in all three cases we know that NAND gate if all the three any one of the input is low then output will be high. Okay. So, but the condition when both are one when both are one here if both are 1 we are giving high voltage here we are giving now high voltage. So, what will happen? If both are 1. So, both are 1 means this diode will be not conducting reverse biased right the diode will be reverse biased reverse bus the diode DC of the cutter bus junction is forward bus, bus here you can see if these are not working, but the current will come to this side. So, now what will happen DC will be working now DC will be working. So, current and it is getting the 
base will be getting the current. So, q 2 will be on as q 2 will be on as q 2 will be on as q 2 will be on then what will happen q 2 will be on. So, q 4 will be on and output is connected to the ground. Okay. So, output is connected to the ground y will be 0 clear. So, we can see that when both the inputs are high q 2 will be turned on and transistor q 4 will be turned on. So, both the transistor the output side will be conducted. So, the output of terminal will be at low volt which is considered logic 0. Okay. Already I have taken that if q 2 is on, so q 4 will be also on and q 4 is on means it will be a closed switch. So, output will be connected to the ground. So, output will be 0. So, it is perfectly giving the truth table of NAND gate. Okay. So, now we are going to discuss the output configuration of TTL logic. There are three different output configuration. First one is totem pole output, then open collector output and tri state gate output. So, let us discuss. This is the totem pole output. So, in totem pole what will then just whatever we have discussed so far that only we are going to discuss here. Okay. So, in the circuit shown the shaded portion shows the totem pole output this, this is the totem pole output this shaded portion is nothing but the totem pole output. Okay. Here we are having uh, 4 transistor q 1, q 2, q 3 and q 4 1 diode D. So, as we have discussed in the previous slide that to make it a simple one what we do we uh, represent this transistor with 2 diodes D and D B. Okay, and here for q 2 we are having one diode that is called D C. Right. So, the transistor here what will happen transistor q 3, q diode and q 4 and the current limiting transistor R 3 from the totem pole output configuration of the T T L. See this is R 3, this is q 3, this is D and q 4. Okay. So, these are the 4 components of totem pole output circuit. There are few advantages of using this configuration. So, let us see what are the advantages. So, first of all when the output switches from low to high state the output transistor q 4 goes from saturation to cut off means when the output is moving from low to out high then what happen q 4 goes from saturation to cut off during this transition the load capacitance across q 3 charges exponentially from low to higher voltage. Okay. As a result of this the load capacitance across q 3 load capacitance across q 3 charges exponentially from low to high voltage. Due to the low output impedance of both transistor q 3 and q 4 the output voltage can change quickly from low to high value as the capacitance change and discharge quickly. So, these are the advantages of totem pole output configuration you can see from the diagram itself. Okay. Next, then open collector output. What is open collector output? You can see that we have taken again for uh, 3 transistors q 1, q 2, q 4. Q 3 is missing here okay, and V C C is connected to uh, directly R 1 and R 2 and here we are having one R 4 register and this is the R L external pull up register, but here we have removed the R 3 okay. that is why it is called the open collector output. What is happening here? The open collector output configuration of transistors and logic is shown in the figure. In this configuration the transistor q 3 and pull up register is eliminated right we have already discussed see here we are having r 3 and this pull up register k sorry r 3 q 3 and r 3 as the pull up register. So, that two has been removed in this circuit and here instead of external pull up register for proper operation as shown in the figure here we are having a r l. Okay. 
the output is taken from the open collector terminal of Q 4. So, we are getting the output from this open collector input output uh, y ok open collector terminal when transistor Q 4 is off when this is off the output y will be high because if it is cut then y will be connected directly to this VCC. So, in this case y will be high and when Q 4 is on when Q 4 is when Q 4 is on this is on then this will be acting as a closed switch. So, uh, y will be connected directly to the ground means y will be 0. Okay. So, this is nothing but the open collector output. Next tri state gate output while operating the transistor in this output configuration it is possible to attain higher speed this is the advantage of tri state gate output we are getting higher speed three output state is possible high low and high impedance when transistor q3 is on the output at terminal y is high the output is low when the transistor Q 4 is turned on the first and second states are the normal operation of TTL. Obviously, these are we have seen that when Q 4 sorry Q 3 is on Y is 1 when Q when Q 3 is on Y is 1 when Q 4 is on Y is 0. So, this is the normal TTL logic also here also we have seen the same thing when Q 3 is on Y is 1 when Q 4 is on Y is 0. Okay. So, this is the normal output of TTL circuit in the third state both the transistor Q 3 and Q 4 are turned off which results in neither low or nor high out this is the third state when both the transistor Q 3 and Q 4 both are off. So, what the result? The result is neither low or nor high output got it very good. These are the advantages this is the high speed operation the propagation delay is around 10 millisecond which is fast compared to DTL and RTL logic devices. When we discuss about RTL and DTL we told that DTL is faster than RTL and DTL. So, how it is faster as the propagation is around 10 nano millisecond less power dissipation compared to DTL and RTL low cost better fan out and reliable operation for noise. So, these are the advantages of TTL logic in comparison to DTL and RTL logic. Next example of retail logic family is ECL emitter coupled logic emitter coupled logic. So, emitter coupled logic abbreviated as ECL is the fastest of all logic families it is the fastest of all logic families it was invented by Hanon S your K in the year of 1956 at IBM it is also called as current mode logic other name of ECL is current mode logic the design of ECL circuit consists of transistors and resistors by preventing the transistor from entering into saturation the high speed operation is achieved in ECL logic family. So, how we are getting better speed in ECL the answer is by preventing the transistor from entering into saturation it does not allow the transistor to get into the saturation mode and that is the reason that ECL performs with a very higher speed. Very small voltage swing is necessary to switch between the two different voltage levels this cannot be achieved in transistor transistor logic as the transistors into saturation mode while in operation. So, the thing is that the voltage swing <coughs> for switching between two voltage level should be very small, but in TTL logic it is not achievable 
right it is achievable only in ecl and that's why ecl is the fastest one okay emitter coupled logic family offers an incredible incredible propagation delay of 1 nanosecond previously it was 10 nanosecond 10 millisecond sorry 10 millisecond but ecl is performing with 1 nanosecond this is faster right the delay is more reduced in the latest ecl families once the it is coming with new versions of ECLs delays more reduced. Okay. Good. So, now we are going to explain the inverter circuit of emitter coupled logic. Okay. So, here we are having supply resistor R 1, R 2 okay. and here we have taken one transistor Q 1 and Q 2 and this is the emitter resistance. Okay. So, let us check it has two NPN transistors connected in differential single ended input mode. Both the emitters are connected together with common resistors R e. Here you can see that the emitter of Q 1 and emitter of Q 2 are connected with R e. Okay. It is a current limit resistance used to prevent the transistor from entering into saturation. Already we have told that as it does not allow to transistor to enter in saturation, but how? How it is not allowing to enter the transistor into trans, uh, saturation mode? So, this is the reason this R e, R e is mainly responsible because we have connected both the emitter of the transistors R e with the R e and it is going to the B e e. Okay. It has two outputs inverting output V out 1, inverting output V out 1 and V in is the and non inverting output V out 1 2. So, this is inverting, inverting output and this is non inverting this is non inverting. V i n is the input terminal, V i n is the input terminal where low or high input is given. You can see we have given either low input or high input. Okay. So, when the input is high, let us discuss when input is high. So, input is high means q 1 will be 1 on when it is high q 1 will be on right, but not saturated to and the transistor q 2 is turned off. If q 1 on q 2 will be off okay. and what will happen? This will pull the trans output v out to high due to the drop in resistance r 1. The output of terminal v out will be at the low value. Okay. So, that is why it is called inverting means here we have given 1, but output we are giving getting 0. So, inverted output right that is why it is called inverting output. On the other side when input V i n is giving low, when V i n low this is low. So, Q 1 will be off, but Q 2 will be on. Okay. V is low turn off q 1 and transistor is turned on the transistor q 2 will not enter into the this this is q 2 transistor is turned on. Okay. But it is not it will not allow it to enter in the saturation right. It will make the output of terminal v out to be pulled high means here we are giving 0 and it is getting 1. So, again inverted output we are getting right due to the drop of resistance R to the output of terminal V out will have a low value. Okay. Got it? Now, next this is the example of two input ECL or oblique NOR gate. Okay. So, you can check it out here transistor Q 1, Q 2, Q 3 R 1, R 2 resistance V n is given to the base of Q 2 okay. and 
we are getting two output. So, V out 1 will be acting giving the output of NOR gate and V out 2 will be giving the output of OR gate. Okay. So, here additional transistor is used at the input side, again another additional transistor we are using previously only two transistor was there, here only here we are getting other additional transistor. Okay. So, you can check it here, the option simple as explained above, if the input at both the transistor Q 1 and Q 2 are low, it will make the V out to V out 1 will be high value. It corresponds to NOR gate output at the same time transistor Q 3 is turned on which will make the V out to be the low, it is corresponding to the OR gate output. I know that OR and NOR are complemented version, right. So, here we are getting the output for NOR gate and V out 2 will be getting the output for OR gate. Similarly, if both the input of transistor Q 1 and Q 2 are high, it will turn on both the transistors. It will drive the output of terminal V out 1 to be low, the transistor Q 3 will be turned off during this operation, it will be driving the output of terminal V out to be high. Okay. So, when both the input both the input or transistor high that that time V out will be 0, this will be V out 1 will be 0, but V out 2 will be 1. Okay. So, this is the NOR gate and OR gate output you are getting from the circuit. What are the pros and cons or advantage and disadvantage? High speed operation is possible already you have seen in the fast state logic family since transistors are not allowed to enter into saturation which reduces the storage delay and fan out capability is very high for ECL. Now, what are the disadvantages? For the fast switching of transistors, the low and high logic levels are kept close. It reduces the noise margin. Since transistors are not allowed to enter into the saturation, the power consumption is more. This is the again one big factor is coming as the transistors are not allowed into the saturation mode, it causes more power consumption. Though the speed is high, but power consumption is more. So, like that it is having the advantage of high speed, but disadvantage of having more power consumption. Okay. So, these are the references and thank you.